What we have in order to complete Work Together 15-1 is our worksheet that is given to us on the right that I have open up and then we have our income statement. A couple of things that you need to note about our income statement is you will see that we do have our four columns here from numbers. We don't, none of these relate to debit or credit. We are just using these columns to get totals and our totals will always end up on the far right. So we just have to see what we need to add up and how we're gonna put things across in order for it to give us our totals on the right. We have a couple other things that we need to go through and affect um, because of the fact that we have purchases, returns, and allowances, and sales returns and allowances. Um, we have realized that customers are going to return products to us. So originally we just had sales and we would subtract our expenses. But now we have the accounts sales discount and sales returns and allowances. Both of those are contra accounts to our sales accounts. So when we go through to calculate the value of our sales, we actually have to take off from the value of our sales, sales discount and sales returns and allowances. We are still going to have some main headings that are going to appear here on our uh, income statement, and then we are going to have some things that are going to be indented. We always start with our income statements on the very top, where we're going to start with the name of a business, name of the document, and the date. The name of our business is Interstate Tire Inc. Name of our document is an income statement, and income statements are always prepared on a, for the fiscal period. The directions over here tells us that the fiscal year ended December 31st, so we are going to go through and give us the date for year ended December 31st, 20XX. Now, our main headings for our income statement are revenue, cost of merchandise sold, gross profit on sales, expenses, and then we're going to have net income before federal income taxes, net income after, in or excuse me, federal income tax, and net income after federal income tax. Those are main headings. Those main headings are going to start on the left-hand side. So we are going to type in the word revenue. The word revenue is followed by a colon. So that means there is no number that goes with it. All I am doing is using this to say that the numbers that are coming after it are all of my revenue accounts. My main revenue account is sales. So below revenue, I'm going to put my account in of sales. And then I look at my worksheet. And when I go down here on my worksheet, here's my sales account. But you need to be aware of, am I going to be using my number from my trial balance? or income statement or balance sheet. We can see sales. Are we doing anything to affect our account sales and our adjustments? No. no. So the number that's on our trial balance is the same one that's on our income statement. So I'm going to take from my income statement the value of sales of $548,989.25, and that's going to go from the second from the right column. And then when we put them on here, you'll see why it goes there once you see them all in. Now, what I need to do next is I need to subtract from this my two contra accounts. So I'm going to type in the word less, and I'm going to subtract out my sales discount. So less followed by a colon, less dis uh, sales discount. Now my sales discount right here is a debit of 661.69, so it's going to go in the second column. Immediately below that, I'm going to put in sales returns and allowances. Sales returns and allowances also has a debit balance, which means it takes away from its controlling account. So these two numbers are going to go in the second column. Both of these numbers added up are going to be what I take away from sales. So that is why sales is in the third column. And then I have my sales discount, my sales returns and allowances in the second column. I need to add those two numbers up. 
the total of those two numbers, and this is what's going to throw you off, goes in this column right here on the same line. Okay, so you add these two numbers up, 661, 69, 3005, 1284, and the total is going to go in the third column. And that is going to be for four thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and fifty three cents so the total amount that I have to subtract from sales is four thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and thirty five cents so what that's going to give me on the next line below is my net sales the word net always means that you took everything away from it that you didn't need anymore you will notice that Aplia is putting a single line underneath these numbers to indicate, hey, we did some math. So now you will notice that this 4,174.53 is directly below my sales. What am I going to do with this 4,000? Add or subtract? So I'm going to take my value of sales, 548.989, and I'm going to subtract my 4,174.53, and the total is going to go in the right column, and that is my net sales. That is the total value of money coming into my business, taking off from it my returns and allowances and my discount. So my net sales is 544-814.72. That is how you calculate your um, revenue section of your income statement. After you do your revenue section, you're going to go through and do your cost of merchandise. I am purposely not doing the last column. You do that at the end. Okay, so I'm going to finish all my numbers, and then I'm going to go back and do my percent columns. So my revenue section is the first one. The next one I'm going to do is going to be called cost of merchandise sold, followed by a colon. Again, when it's followed by a colon, that means, hey, there's no numbers. This is just the name of a section. Is going to be that we have to have our merchandise inventory on January 1st, and we have to have it on December 31st. On our worksheet, when we look here on our worksheet, this number on my travel balance right here, this is January 1st. Over here, on my balance sheet, that's going to be my December 31st. But you have to realize we have two different numbers here, and which one are you going to use first? So you're going to use your January 1st number is going to come from your trial balance. So below cost of merchandise sold, the first line is going to say merchandise inventory. January 1st. And you're going to go to the third column, and you're going to put in the 198, 198,480,33, the amount from our trial balance, 198,480 dollars and 33 cents. Again, that is what we had when the business started the fiscal period on January 1st. From here, we are going to go through and put in our purchases. You will recall, any time a business goes through and buys more items that we are going to sell, we are going to put it in an account called purchases. If I scroll down on my worksheet to look for my purchases account, purchases has a debit balance here of $278,452.39. That is going to go in the second column, 278,452.39. Purchases is not affected by any adjustments, so you will notice the number that is in the trial balance is the same as the income statement. From here, from my purchases, I need to subtract out my two contra accounts for my purchases. So I'm going to say less purchases discount. And purchases discount has a credit balance of $1,845,078. 
It goes in the first column, and then I'm also going to subtract my purchases, returns, and allowances, which will also go in the first column, and that has a balance of $3,548.65. So you'll notice that this heading here for my less amount is very similar to my sales, but it's going to be in the first column because I now need to get the total of the two things I'm going to subtract. So where do you think I'm going to put the total of these two? Just like we did up here, my sales returns and allowances, my two lesses, I'm going to add them up, and it's going to go on the exact same line, just over. It'll be directly below purchases. So when I add up my purchases discount of $1,845.78 and my purchases returns and allowances of $3,548.65, I get $5,000. Three hundred and ninety-four cents and five thousand three hundred ninety-four dollars and forty-three cents. Can't talk today. <clears throat> that five thousand number is truly the amount that we take away from purchases. So what I need to do is the total amount that I paid for products this year is two thousand seven seven hundred eighty. Yeah, this number. La, 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 la. My purchase is number, and I'm going to subtract the two discounts, the discounts and the sales returns and allowances, which is going to give me my net purchases. Net purchases and net sales, basically the word net on there means that we've gone through and taken off uh, things that would uh, take away from the account. So below purchases, returns, and allowances, we are going to have the word that's going to say net purchases. So I'm going to subtract the 5000 from the 278, and that's going to give me 273.5796, and that will go in the third column. So for this whole year, the total value of product that the business bought is this $273,057.96. We did all of this math here to figure out the value of additional products that we bought. This right here, my merchandise inventory on January 1st is the value of my products that I started the fiscal year with. This is how much I bought throughout the year. My next line down is truly going to be the heading that is going to say total cost of merchandise available for sale. Because that really is everything my business had on the shelves this year. Total cost of merchandise available for sale. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two numbers together to give me my total cost of merchandise available for sale. The next line is going to be less my merchandise inventory on December 31st. That I'm going to get up on top on my worksheet, but I have to go all the way over here and I have to get it from my balance sheet. This number here on my balance sheet is different than my trial balance on my worksheet. So my December 31st balance of merchandise inventory, again, comes from my balance sheet. So I'm going to take that number, and it's going to go right here below total cost of merchandise available for sale in the third column. That's going to be... $188,999.25. Sure. Wait, how did you get that? From your worksheet on the top. Oh. From merchandise inventory on the balance sheet. My next line is going to say cost of merchandise sold. Because I'm going to take these two numbers, because right here I said less, 
Now I'm going to subtract these two numbers, and the total is then going to go in the right column. This is how much merchandise I had throughout the whole fiscal period. This is how much I have right now, so the difference is going to be what I sold to all of my customers. And when I do that math, I'm going to get 282000 $539 and four cents. Now, we did all of this work to get to the point of where we were with our service business. Sales, here's the value of our product. Remember my example at the beginning where I told you I had this calculator, I sold it for 40, but it cost me 10? This is how I calculate that $10, but for all of the products throughout my whole business. So what I have to do right now is this is my sales, the 40, this would be my $10 that I just told you at the beginning for my calculator. I need to subtract those two, and that is going to give me my gross profit on sales. Gross profit on sales, again, is just the total value of profit that we made from selling my calculators. In my example, my gross profit would have been 30. So I'm going to go through and subtract these two, and it's going to give me a balance of $262,275.68. Two that's the hard part of the income statement. Okay? Practice. The rest of the income statement goes through pretty straightforward because we are just going to list all of our expenses. And yes, it matters the order of our expenses. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a heading on here that's going to say expenses. And then I'm going to go here to my worksheet, and I'm going to list all of my expenses, starting with advertising down to utilities. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not put in federal income tax expense right away. Okay. What you are going to do is it's going to be a special spot on the worksheet. So right now, what I want you to do is you're going to take all of these accounts and we're going to list them here. Now, you need to also watch the amount because you can't always go from trial balance. Why? You have some adjustments. So it's always better for you to go from the income statement columns for the values. So I'm going to start with my first one. I'm going to put in advertising expense. And the number is going to go in the third column. And advertising expense has a balance of $9,320. $9, then I will do cash short and over. Has a balance of $5.27. Yeah, I'll go in the third column. I'll go in the third column. Credit card fee expense, $9,454.45. Depreciation expense, office equipment, $4,260. Depreciation expense, Store, $5,750. Insurance, again going from our income statement column, insurance expense is $6,000. Miscellaneous expense, $6,480. Payroll taxes expense, $9,315.66.
Rent expense, eighteen thousand. Salary expense, one hundred and two thousand five hundred and seventy six dollars. Supplies expense, office first, $2,486.99. Supplies expense, store, $2,948.28. Uncollectible accounts expense, $1,680. Utilities expense six thousand four hundred eighty seven dollars and eighty nine cents. Do not put federal income tax expense on there. You need to go through right now and total all of your expenses. Okay, so the last expense you'll always do is going to be the one below, right above federal income tax. You're going to list them all here. Then below that, you're going to put in the heading of total expenses, and then you're going to take your calculator out, and you're going to add them up. When I added up all of my total expenses, I get $184,764.54. Now, from that, I'm going to subtract less my federal income tax expense. Because I need to, oh wait, totally missed a line. Wow. I need to put in my net income before federal income tax. So what I need to do is because what I have up in the top is I have my gross profit on sales, the two hundred sixty-two thousand two seventy-five sixty-eight. Here I have my expenses from just operating my business. I'm going to subtract the two, and that is going to give me my net income before my federal income tax. So it really shows me how much profit that my business made without accounting for any taxes I need to pay for the government. So I'm going to subtract those two numbers, and it's going to give me $77,511.14. From my net income, guess what I have to subtract? My federal income tax expense. And that we are going to get from our trial balance, and it's going to be fourteen thousand six hundred three seventy nine. Again, you need to remember to take that number here on our worksheet from our income statement column, not from our trial balance. Okay, so I'm taking my federal income tax all the way over here because I've already gone through and calculated it with my adjustment column here. So I'm going to take that fourteen thousand, go there, subtract over. And I'm going to have my net income after federal income tax, and that should give me $62,907.35. They gave you a worksheet. They gave you an income statement because you need the worksheet to calculate our... Uh, net income on our income statement. The other thing I need you to realize is look at this number here, the 62907.35 that I've calculated. Look at this number. They need to be the same. If they're not, you've made a mistake somewhere. Okay. Your net income on your worksheet. <laughs> The net income after federal income tax on our income statement needs to be the same number. That's how you can check. That's the only reason that this has this double line underneath it because it's saying, guess what? They equal. Again, Applia goes through and puts the double line on there because it says, well, you should equal. If not, you're going to erase it and fix it. And guess what? If you just put the right number here and all the other numbers are wrong above, you're going to lose a ton of points. 
So it doesn't do any good just to type the number from your uh, worksheet and put it in there. Now, the last thing that we have to do on our income statement is to go through and calculate our percent of sales. And we are going to calculate that on all of these ones that are in the right-hand column except for everything after our federal income tax. Okay. Now, the heading of the column says percent of net sales. So whatever the number is, I have to divide by my net sales. So what happens if I divide a number by itself? What percent do I have? 100. So this first one up here, when you divide sales by sales, it will always give you 100%. The next one that I'm going to do, my cost of merchandise sold, I need to use my calculator and I'm going to take 282,539.04 and I'm going to divide by my sales. And that will give me this number on my calculator. I need to convert this to a decimal. How many decimal places do I need to have? One. So I'm going to move my decimal two to the right. So it would be 51.85. I need to round that up. Normal rounding rules. So I need to put this in there as 51.9%. That is an important number. It's so important, I want you to look here. Hang on one second, Jane. Okay. This number is this important, okay? So, for every dollar that we go through and we sell, how much of it is cost? If I, for every dollar, 51 cents, do you see that? This is where accountants help businesses to go through and look at it and say, guess what? This number is too high. You are spending too much money. Two things I can do to change this percent. I can make this number go down, which means instead of buying this calculator for $10, go someplace else and find it for seven. Okay, would that change this number? The other thing I can do is instead of selling this calculator for 40, I could sell it for 45. And that would cause my sales number to go up. Either way, that would affect this percentages. And accountants will always work with their businesses and look at these percentages, and there are acceptable percentages for every type of business out there. There are some businesses that they don't have a large profit margin on each item they sell. So that is why when you take a look at real estate, you're going to have a different um, gross profit here than you would, for example, a restaurant. You have different costs that are associated with it. These numbers here are vital to the business to see how they are doing from year to year. Because no matter what, when you convert it to a percent, you can compare every year to see how you are doing. Even if the economy goes poor, you are going to have less sales, but you then in turn you wouldn't buy as much product, you would still be able to compare it year to year. Let's do the same thing for gross profit on sales. You're going to take your number of 262, 275.68 and you're going to divide that by your sales number. And I get the number, I get a 48.1%. That means for every dollar I sell, the profit that I get to keep is 48 cents. I will do the same thing for calculating my percent for my total expenses. <coughs> Thank you.
and my total expenses is 33.9. That means for every dollar that I sell, it costs me in my expenses 33 cents, or basically 34 cents. My net income then, is 14.2 cents, 14.2 percent, excuse me. For every dollar that this business sells, the profit they are keeping for this fiscal period was 14 cents. This is how it enables businesses to go through and compare a multi-million dollar business to one that doesn't sell in the millions of dollars. Because if you compare it to the percentages, you can see that one business, even though they have a greater volume of sales, they may have higher expenses. So the smaller business, even though they don't have the volume of sales, could technically be doing better because this percent here for their net income would be greater meaning that business keeps more profit from every dollar that they sell. That is why this column is so important. Okay. How come mine is like great? 